we're going to take a look now at using Google Docs to create um, a spreadsheet with the class data, or sort of with data from a cooling curve, and then see if we can make a graph using that. So if you don't have a, a Microsoft Excel on your computer or some other spreadsheet program, you can go to Google and create for yourself a free um, Gmail account. Create, sign up for a Gmail account. When you go in, you'll, be, you'll see at the top of the screen an option there, not only for Gmail, but an option for Drive. And that's what I'm in right now. I'm in the Google Drive. This is like um, Edmodo's backpack in that you have an online storage. You can see I have a bunch of things that I've created and stored on here. This is where I store, for example, our shared data sheet for air and sand. Um, now, within Google Drive, I want to click here on the left, Create. And I want to create a spreadsheet. Okay, this is going to be similar to the spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel, but it's not exactly the same. There's a few differences. Now I've cheated a bit, and I've already copied from Excel the data that we used earlier. I'm just going to paste it in here um, rather than retype everything. So similar to Excel, we've got three columns: A, B, C. And in column A, I've put time in seconds. Column B, I've put temperature in degrees Celsius with the naphthalene. And in column C, temperature for water. You could put the water in column B if you want, and the, temp and the naphthalene in column C, that's fine. But be sure that your column A includes your temperatures. Now, I believe that, that Google's spreadsheet is similar to um, Microsoft Excel in that for the times when you've entered two of them, like 0 and 30, and now you're going to go up by 30 every time, you can click on this little box here. Notice I've highlighted 0 and 30. I've highlighted both of those numbers. And now the little box appears. If I click and drag that box down, that should fill in the numbers for me so I don't have to type in all of those times. There's no little trick to play with the temperatures. You'll just have to type those in yourself. So these are the temperatures from an experiment I did. You may have a bit more data. You may have a bit less data. That's OK. All right. So I've got my data entered. What I want to do now is make the graph. I want to make a scatter plot. So I'm going to highlight all of the data. And I'm doing this just off the cuff here, I'm seeing if what I know about Microsoft Excel is similar in, um, in Google Docs. So I've highlighted all of the data, including the labels at the top. And now I want to create a graph. I'd like to create a, a chart. So I'm looking here on the side. There are some buttons. And right here, there's a button that says Insert Chart. In fact, I'm sure if I went up to the Insert menu, it would be there as well. Yes, it is. Here's an Insert Chart option. So if I say Insert a Chart, it's telling me that I've already selected a range of data, which is nice. Um, it's giving me some uh, using row 1 as headers. So row 1, it recognizes, was not numbers. It was labels, which is good. If I go to Charts here, the next tab, I want a scatter plot. And right here is the option for scatter plots. And there's two options here, a bubble chart and scatter plot. I want scatter plot, so I'm going to click that option there. So now that's highlighted. Good. Um, let's see. If I customize the scatter plot, let's see what we can do under customizing. We can put a title in, so I can call this the cooling, whoops, somehow back on there. So here I am. Change the title to cooling curve of naphthalene and water. That's good. Um, it gives me an option for a legend, which right now is on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, it lets me put it on the bottom. I think I'll do that. I'll move it to the bottom of the graph. If I scroll down even further, um, let's see. There's a horizontal axis options, and it gives me a chance to put a title. So I can change this to... Uh, my computer is bugging me. Change the title to time in seconds. And notice that it lets you choose a minimum and a maximum. My maximum I'll put to 600 just because that was my maximum value. And I'll choose 0 for the minimum value. Good. Um, the labels, let's see here, major grid lines. It's putting 
five of them. Does that mean there's five grid lines? One, two, three, four, five. That appears to be the case. If I change that to 10, there we go. Now we've got 60, 120, so that's going up by one minute interval, so that's fine. Um, there are zero uh, minor labels. If I put, sorry, minor grid lines. If I put two, no, I'm going to just leave that at zero. Okay. The number format, I don't think I need to play with that. I think that looks pretty good. If I go back up to the axes again and change the axis from horizontal axis to the left vertical axis, now I can give it a title. This was temperature and alt 248. Yep, that still gives me a degree symbol. Holding the alt button down on the keyboard on the keyboard. And if you have a number pad on the right side of your keyboard, type 248 while holding the, the alt button down. Then let the alt button go and you should see a degree symbol. If you don't have that degree symbol, that's fine. Just put a capital C for Celsius like this. Um, the minimum and maximum value, my minimum temperature was just over 60 degrees. So I'm going to let 60 be my minimum. And my maximum was it looks good right now. I'll just leave it as 90 degrees. That looks pretty good. Um, grid lines right now, major grid lines. There's five of them. Let's see. What if I make that 10? What will that do? 60. Ooh, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's because it's going up by 3, 60, 63, 66, because we had a 30 degree range, 60 to 90. And um, we said 10 grid lines, so, so 30 divided by 10, it's going up by 3. If I'd like to go up by 5, then 30 divided by 6 would be 5. So if I say 6 grid lines, there we go. That's not bad. 60, <laughs> 66. Oh, sorry. I should make that 5. Ah! That's not working out for me. I guess I'm going to leave it like that. That's a little annoying. The minor grid lines, I'll just leave alone. That's fine. I guess, let me just try this. Suppose I put um, f uh, four minor grid lines and I make it look gray. Ooh, that's not looking good. What will that be then? 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Ooh, that's not good. All right, but I'm not going to put any minor grid lines. I suppose if I gave it some time, I could play with that and make it uh, make it work out nicely. But it has to be something that's readable as well. So I don't quite like the uh, the ability to change the axis minimum maximum uh, quite as well as I do in Excel. But but this works nice. This works okay uh, for something free. You can't complain, right? All right. So there we go. That looks pretty good. Now if I say insert, it puts the graph right here on the sheet. Now, there's a little arrow here. I wonder what this does. Right-click that arrow. Hmm. One option is to move it to its own sheet. I like that. Move it to its own sheet, and now I've got this whole graph here, which is good. At the bottom of the screen, there's Sheet 1 and there's Chart 1. Sheet 1 takes me back to my data table. Chart 1 takes me to the graph. Now, notice there's an option up here to copy the chart. Well, that's going to be nice. Let's let's try that. I'm going to open up Microsoft Word and see if we can um, see if we can insert this graph into a uh, say a lab report that I'm typing. So if I go back to here, I'll say copy the chart, and now there it says copy complete. Let's go over to Word and try pasting that. Let's see what happens. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Paste. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. Copy the chart. Copy and chart to clipboard. Working. Copy complete. And now back to here. Paste. Paste special. Let's try that. Okay, well that seems to be a bit of a problem. Um, copying and pasting doesn't seem to be working. I'm going to try one more 
time. Let's go back to the sheet. And here I'm going to highlight the data. I'm going to right click and copy that. Now I'll go back to Microsoft Word and paste. All right, that worked well. So I can copy and paste the data table into my lab report. What if I go back to the chart and try, um, let's see, view mode. Hmm. Publish the chart. Okay, cancel that. Um, let's see, why can't I do that? Copy the chart to the clipboard. You can now paste the chart into documents and presentations. Well, that's what Google claims. Why does Microsoft not want to do that? So we'll try one more time here. Paste. Okay. Well, so we seem to have a small problem. We can create the graph in in um, Google Docs, but it's not letting me paste it. Well, let's go back to Google Docs here. What if we were to publish the chart? Let's say OK. Um, we want to publish just an image. Done. There we go. Where did it publish it? OK. Now can I select one? That copy that address and go there. All right, so there's the graph. Now that it's an image, I should be able to copy the image and put that in. There we go. So that worked. So let's just see what we did. We went back to Google Docs. We published published the chart. And I said, I want to just publish an image. Now, right here, it gives me a source. If I highlight inside there, starting at the HTTP, I'm highlighting the address to the image. And then right click, I'm going to go to that or copy that, and then go to your internet, your browser, paste, go to that, and that should take you to the image. Now that it's an image, you can copy the image and paste that directly into Word. It's a little irritating, but it, it works. It does the job. Okay, so there's an option for those of you who don't have Microsoft Excel. And notice the little problem solving that we went through there. All right, so you've made your graph in um, in uh, Google Docs on a spreadsheet. Right now it says Untitled Spreadsheet. If you click up there, you can give it a more descriptive name. This is the cooling curve of Napoline. And this will be saved in your Google Drive, so you'll be able to access this again um, from any computer with internet access. So we went to publishing the chart, because copying the chart didn't seem to work for me. So we went to publish the chart. I guess another option there was save an image. If we saved the image, then right down at the bottom, there's the image. If I click on that, that should open the image in my browser. And now I can copy it from here and paste it as well. So there's another option for you. Rather than go to the browser, just save it as an image, and then you can insert the image into Microsoft Word um, if you're making a lab report there. Of course, you can also be inserting the image right here on Google Docs. You can create, rather than a spreadsheet, you could create right here a document, and you can type your lab reports right here uh, in Google Docs, and everything would be saved online. So I hope that helps. There's some options for creating graphs.